So I ordered some magnetic build surfaces for my Kellen printer to upgrade it and make it way more usable. I also reached out to the makers of these and asked if they wanted to sponsor a video and they were nice enough to send out some extra things for another printer of mine. So I'll be showing why these are even a thing and why you might want to get some. So let's get started. So what do I mean about actually making this more usable? Well, this is a larger format printer or a medium, I guess. As you can see, it has a large build plate. And this build plate has these holes in it. And if you wanted to print anything flat on this, it gets into these holes and makes little divots that you have to deal with. And it makes it so the bottom of your print isn't going to be perfectly flat. Also printing really big pieces are really hard to get off of this and you usually break them or you damage them trying to do so. So this will also help with that. So to sum this up, which just looks like a piece of metal, and it kind of is, it is spring steel. And in the middle of it is a magnet. This magnet has an adhesive on the back that you stick to your build plate and then this just kind of sticks on. So this one comes with two plates, so you can just pop one off, pop the other one back on, and start printing without having to clean everything off. You also lose less resin this way. These are also made out of spring steel. So once your print is on here and you pop it off, you bend it and everything should just fall off of it. We're gonna test this out and see, but I need to install everything first. So for a quick example, say I wanted to print this on this build plate. Well, anywhere I put it, it's going to be over the bolt holes and it's going to have marks or little protrusions on the other side of it that you'd have to clean up and you're gonna have to scrape this off a flat surface which risks breaking this. So the only real option is to put it on at an angle and have supports and have a base, but that also adds up your print time from about an hour and a half printed flat like this to about six hours printed upright. So that's where these build surfaces are gonna come in handy. So these build sheets are also made for just about any printer that's on the market right now. And most of them do have already flat surfaces. But that being said, it still allows you to remove your pieces without damaging them with a spatula or anything like that. And it allows you to just switch them out real quick and start printing again if you're doing that much quantity. So this is what Wham Bam sent me separate from my actual order. It is the flex plate system for this printer, which is the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro and their mega slap mat. So let's look at this first. So it is a silicone mat, a very big silicone mat. So you can do all of your cleanup on this. So if you need to take this off and it's covered in resin, you can put it on here, do all your work, and then take this outside and let it cure and just peel everything off and throw away the residual cured resin. So it looks like it comes with two stickers and some simple instructions for it. So in the build system box, it comes with a little bit of sandpaper if you need to scuff up your surface and kind of smooth it out to make sure everything's going to stick. More stickers, instructions, and then the actual unit themselves. So here we go. And this is their dual system or double wham is what they call it, where it comes with two different plates. You can get them with just one and it takes away that ability of swapping this out, but if that's all you need, then that's all you need. So if we take our original build plate and put this on just to see how it would fit on here, it looks like it would fit perfectly on here. So we need to actually start sticking these two plates and see how everything works. So these are pretty simple to install. Basically, you need to take the sheets off of them. So you'll have something like this. This will be the out facing part and this will be the sticky adhesive part. So we need to make sure this has nothing on it or any oils or anything like that. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and use a little bit of alcohol and just wipe it down. So I'm just going to peel up one side of this and just kind of fold it down like that. And then we got to stick it on here. So it's gonna look something like that. And then you're just gonna to wanna to work this 
all the way across without getting any bubbles underneath it. I'm going to be using one of my little plastic scrapers to push on it so it doesn't ruin anything. All right, so there we go. It looks like I got a little bit off right here, which should be fine. And then it's gonna be a little out over here. You can just cut this off with a razor and it should be good. So with that on there like that, I should be able to put one of the metal plates on and pinch my fingers a little bit, but there we go. So with this added, you're going to have to re-level your machine, which is fine and pretty simple on most of these machines. If you look here though, it has a little tab that allows you to kind of push up and pull this off. And that's how you get them off. So you can just kind of just throw it on there and it's gonna be off and you can push it around to even it out. So not bad. So let's do the big one now. So here it is, it's all on there. And it's a little off on top and a little over on the bottom. I'll just trim it up and it should be good to go. So there we go, we have our build surface on there and it looks good. So now I just need to re-level both these printers and do some printing. So here are my two finished prints, and as you can see, they printed perfectly fine without any failure on my build surfaces. There is a little bit of a change in settings that you're going to need to do if you're going to print things completely flat, because the bottom layers normally have a longer cure time, so it's going to be over cured on the bottom. There are ways to get around doing that, but you're just going to have to mess with your settings and see what will stick without making too much of a foot onto it. So in this particular one, I wanted to show the difference in time for printing something flat versus printing something at a 30 degree angle like you normally would and with supports. So as you can tell, a big difference. Like I said though, you're gonna have to worry about the little elephant's foot type of thing you're getting on the piece. But once you get that figured out or dialed in with your settings, you're going to have way faster prints. So let's take this off. So you could in theory just swipe this down and put on a different plate and start printing with this one again. And you'll be left with this piece to work with. You can throw this whole thing into your wash and cure system or clean it on here, or you can just pop these off, which I'm going to show popping these off. You might also notice that I'm working on this lap mat so I don't get resin all over my work area and I can easily clean this. So that's the whole purpose of having one of these mats. So this is my wash and cure system. It's full of 99% alcohol and here's our little plate. Normally you would scrape these off, but if you flip this over and bend it, you can pull your pieces right off. This one might be a little bit harder just because it's cracking its supports. But there we go. So both those go in there and I could wipe this down and wash it off on its own. So I'm going to set this up so it does its little wash cycle and it's gonna be in there for about five and a half minutes. All right, so here they are out of the washing system. And you can see it looks pretty good. There are some little bits in here that look like they cured a little bit afterwards. I don't know if it's from all my studio lighting or not that kind of cured stuff, which is gonna really suck for the thing that's sitting over there, but yeah. And it's still attached to all of its supports. And now it's not. So you can see the difference in them. And like I said, if you can figure out your settings for your material, you can get rid of the little weirdness on the outside of that 
and it will take a fraction of the time to print. That being said, you can still print them this way. So if you look at this one, you can see that it has a bunch of lines in it from the layers. This was printed at 0 0.05 millimeters and with no anti-aliasing. The reason for that is it makes everything a lot sharper, but you can see the lines. As you saw, these were both printed at the same time, and there's almost no lines in this one because they should be all on the sides. If you look at the back of them, this one has a perfectly flat finish, and this one has a bunch of marks from your supports. So you'll have to go through and clean all this up with sanding and then fill them in with wax before you do any type of casting, if that's what you're going to be doing. Or if you're going to be doing painting on just the resin piece, you're going to have to do the same thing for the most part, besides not fill it with wax. So as you can see, these are bigger pieces too. I also printed them scaled down a bit, and it pretty much came out the same. Besides the fact that this one is much thinner than this one, and this is the one that was printed at 30 degrees, and this is the flat one. If you look at these two, you can feel that this one is a little bit thinner than this one. So you can even see that this one is a lot thinner than this one without even measuring it. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be printing things completely flat. So basically design around that and you'll be fine. So now I need to get this one off. And this would be very difficult to get off without damaging it if you didn't have this plate on here. And I wouldn't have been able to print it as clean as I did. <laughs> That's it. I literally just picked up on one side and now it's stuck to this. There we go. So here's our piece. And if I feel around the edge, I can feel that it has a little bit of that foot on it as well, just because of the curing. I could easily take that down just by sanding it, or I can turn that down a bit so it doesn't over cure as much. And I just have to find the sweet spot so it sticks to this and doesn't fall off and fail. You can also see, this is the back side of it. These are a lot more rounded on this side and a lot sharper on this side. So it's just some things to keep in mind. You need to design around how you're making things. So yeah, that's some things to look out for. So I'm gonna wash this thing off and see how it came out. So with everything drying and ready to be cured, I need to clean this off now. And the easy way to do that is to just throw this outside and let it cure and just peel it off. All right, so this is all cured now, and see, I can touch it and it doesn't smear. And then all you have to do is kind of bend it up and it will just pop off. So if it's still kind of tacky, you could just kind of leave it outside for a bit longer until everything's completely hard or just put some gloves on. All right, so this is about as clean as I'm going to get it. I just sprayed a little bit of alcohol on it and wiped it down with a paper towel to get most of the small pieces off. All right, so here they are, and they both look really good. There is some stuff on the inside of them that is from just having my lights on and it curing and making a video. So try to ignore those. So I also cleaned this one up, the little foot that was all the way around it. I just took a razor and just cut it all off and it cleaned up pretty easy. And the back of this is a really smooth finish. When it comes to the other one, it has the little marks like I've shown before. So here is the honeycomb disc that I printed and it came out pretty good. It still had a little bit of a foot on it just like the others and I sanded it down and everything is pretty much even now. It is a little burnt from too much UV. That happens a lot with the clear resins like this. They will start to change color a little bit and yellow or get sunburnt. So overall these worked really good and it made everything really easy to take off. This would have been a nightmare to take off and you saw how it just fell off the plate just by barely touching it. So honestly, I don't really have anything bad to say about these. They help with your 3D printing. They keep things a lot cleaner because resin printing is a huge mess. And that's about it. If you'd like to get some of these, I will have links in the description. And like I said, they did send me the smaller one and the mat, and I purchased the larger one on my own before even getting any of this. So thank you Wham Bam for sending me the little extra things with my actual order. And yeah, I'll be ordering more of these for the rest of my printers pretty soon to just make everything easier for myself. 
So if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Leave a thumbs up on my video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Check out some of the stuff over here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.